Wow, morning everybody. Well, uh, Roach has managed to um, sneak off to the woods yet again for uh, a lovely couple of days. We um, moved in uh, about um, half three, four o'clock uh, yesterday. So when we moved into the woods, we ended up setting up in the dark, which um, is a real kind of skill in a itself. a good few years since I um, kind of had to move in and set up guys up your knots, your kit and equipment, you know, the, the discipline of not putting something down. So, of course, in the dark, it's uh, mislaid and uh, potentially lost until the morning. You know, so that was a real kind of remind and revise of my um, personal skills for me. I spy with my little eye something beginning with M. Okay, so uh, a bit of a wash and a shave, uh, up with the lark, bit of stretching, it all seems to be working. I haven't had a massive stroke in the middle of the night. <laughs> and, uh, when you get to my age, you have to check stuff like that out every, uh, every morning. Uh, let me talk you through my uh, tarp that I made myself and uh, see what you think of it. Um, I made it uh, out of the same fabric that I made the uh, rooftop tent out of. So it's a kind of wax cotton fabric and anyone that owns a uh, kind of barber jacket, sort of outdoor uh, coat, will be familiar with the fabric. Uh, it's cotton but 100% waterproof, it's impregnated with some sort of um, oils uh, during the manufacturing process. Uh, I wanted a big tarp, this one is um, 9 foot square, 3 by 3, but they were you know 350 quid on the net which is um, you know way too much money for me. So I um, found a company in Scotland that make the fabric, ordered uh, seven meters, so six meters to make the tarp plus a meter spare, and uh, sat down at the sewing machine like I do and um, knocked it up. Um, had to put a major seam down the middle where I've joined the two pieces of fabric together and that was uh, probably the toughest bit of it. Uh, hemmed it around the edge, just put an each return and hemmed it down. And then um, some reinforcing sort of patches. These sort of reinforcing patches, I've uh, doubled a piece of fabric over, so I've cut a sort of um, uh, five or six inch square, I think it was, folded it in half till it was a triangle, put it on the inside to reinforce the uh, corner. My um, children had this little kind of, it um, uh, wasn't really a tent, but maybe a play tent, or actually it was a sort of sunshade for the beach, uh, and it had um, got to the end of its life, but. When I was throwing it away, I, I took all the fixings off of it, thinking that they might come in handy sometime. And uh, so I had four of these fixings that I've uh, recycled. And then I had to make a couple. So this is just a um, nylon strap that I've um, uh, sewn on. Uh, so it's got um, eight fixing points in total. It's got one of these in each corner. And then uh, it's got uh, this type of uh, fixing in uh, the middle and uh, at each end of the ridge line. Uh, I slept in my Gore-Tex bivy bag last night because um, it, it hadn't really been tested. And I was pretty sure that um, it was going to be waterproof, but didn't absolutely know. So I kind of thought rather than have a situation where I woke up at three or four o'clock in the morning soaking wet in my four season sleeping bag and uh, sleeping bags are the sort of thing that if they get wet they stay wet I thought right put it in my Gore-Tex bivy bag belt and braces just in case it leaks but um, it didn't and um, so I think we're uh, we've kind of done it really my sleep system is the same one that I used uh, last year really I've filled my survival bag up with leaves Inside my Gore-Tex bivy bag, I've just got a three-quarter length um, um, vacuum mattress, my four-season sleeping bag. I think in truth, it is just a little bit tight. I sort of woke up in the night thinking I was being consumed by a giant snake. Uh, it could probably do with being uh, 
six to ten inches bigger, wider for me to um, feel you know quite comfortable. That's one of my mail sacks. I've just uh, filled that up with leaves, folded it into itself, and I've got a little sponge sort of kneeling sitting mat and a um, dinner plate in there. But I fold my bag over. There's my uh, uh, fleece and my um, sort of combat jacket. Uh, it's really, really mild for October. So all I do during the day is just fold the bag over. That keeps my uh, bits and bobs uh, dry. And uh, that's my little system. There's my sort of candle lantern. I've had this lantern 10 years and I had the one before it about the same sort of time. Uh, it uses a nine hour candle. I've literally just changed it for the first time ever. I normally sort of light the candle when I go to bed, maybe I'll read for an hour, get my, get my uh, book out. Um, but uh, it's uh, kind of super dupe. It's a great gadget and like I say, that's the first time I've ever had to change that candle. But sometimes at night it also gives you a beacon to home in on your, uh, in your tent. So I'll give you some idea of the walk in last night, you know, coming through this sort of terrain in the dark <coughs> was uh, a little tricky for sure, but uh, certainly woke up some uh, some old skills that haven't had an airing in a while. As you can see it's uh, very very easy to twist an ankle or take a little tumble. But there's also something just uh, incredible about it. Terrain is uh, littered with these um, 20, 30 foot kind of trenches really. Uh, um, that you uh, sort of, you know, are down and up again and, you know, with a burger on your back it's uh, less than straightforward and it was getting dark. So, um, got here, first time in uh, a long long time I've set up in the dark and um, there'll be a little bit of adjustment today adjusting the guy lines maybe um, sorting my little um, tent out uh, but um, uh, but got my kit out put my basher up uh, didn't misplace or lose anything which is a common thing in the dark and um, just um, pretty good drills really so quite pleased with myself there I can give myself a pat on the back um, a couple of bits of equipment that I've um, noticed this morning could have done with a little bit more uh, care and maintenance, but um, it's not going to be the end of the world. Um, what I'll do is I'll kind of whiz you around everyone else's setup once they've um, found their feet. We're just about to uh, crack into a kind of communal breakfast. I've got some friends here that I'll introduce you to in a bit, but they're um, rest assured the normal suspects. And uh, we're all here in the woods for a couple of nights away. This is our sort of anniversary camp, you know, this is exactly what we did this time last year and uh, we had a ball, so um, I'll introduce you to everybody uh, as soon as they're ready. So here we are at Master Chef in the woods and uh, Chef Funky has got um, the 48 inch frying pan on the go and uh, nothing but the bare essentials, but uh, lucky for us he's got it all in hand. So, everyone's busy except uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> well, See, is it, is it sort of a. Can't sort of make a great food without a good penny. A present from my friend Peter. Oh! <laughs> what a change I'm not wearing that. <laughs> oh, uh, I don't know, croissants, bread. Bit of bread. I've never had black sausage. Haven't you? No, oh, or white. Really never. Quite sweet. Yeah, if it's not, this looks like the real McCoy. <laughs> so this is Funky's little uh, tent that he's bought. We've um, slung up sort of tarps just to give us kind of working areas, and. Uh, the uh, Wild Soul 62 has brought her little uh, tent, which is uh, super dupe. She's um, she's saying to uh, to us all that um, next time she's going to uh, sling up the tarp like the rest of us and uh, get down and dirty. But uh, uh, I think she's happy as Larry in there. So his fun his Funky's little uh, you know nothing but the bare essentials with a 14 inch high air bed and uh, and uh, the uh, little percolator but uh, Funky likes a bit of posh crafting. Mm. 
And who could blame you? Yeah, he's Anyone can be uncomfortable. Yeah. Bloody bomb boy. That's nice, isn't it? Okay, that's You wait till it starts picking it up and bubbling like lovely, lovely, lovely. Oh, yeah. And here we have the posh craft chef. Yeah. I tell you, many you. years of experience has produced this. Uh... But what about the cooking? <laughs> 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 we thought we'd just go for some wild edibles and. <laughs> You know, I think what, I might stay an extra day. <laughs> so the rain set. Yeah. Been a great old trip though. Oh. Let's have another five minutes. Let me get up and seize the day. So everyone's getting a little bit of breakfast under the tops this morning. Got to get it all going in the mornings. Blood going. Try and get rid of all the aches and pains. Have I mentioned to everybody? My tarp didn't leak. And we wait again packed. Okay, so as I said before, I've never really been a fan of uh, people that say, oh, you need a specific knot to put your hammock up, to put your uh, tarp up. You know, I've always uh, been of the opinion that uh, 
Um, the required knot is one that doesn't come undone. But got this off of Dave Canterbury. First time I've ever played with it. Absolutely brilliant. So make a loop, put a little twig in it just to make sure it doesn't release in the middle of the night, come down on you. When well, you've got to put your tarp away. Voila. Okay, so this was what, what was in my survival bag, which was my mattress. So we just kind of kick that out back where it uh, was. And uh, we're sort of halfway towards the uh, leave no track. Ready? One, Ready? two, three, mark. Oh shit, I put mine on two feet. <laughs> Well, you're, you're a two's up, are you? Well, I don't know how I can do all this in one go. Yeah. If he can do it, I can do it. It's the getting up, it's not the being up. Is that a cold steel shovel down the side? Nothing but a bare essential sticks. Shovel with two packs. The only thing is, I can't stand around chatting for too long. Okay, as always, any comments, love to hear them. Stay funky. Back soon.